Hello, and welcome to ENI UK and Europe edition. I'm Jakarta Matera, reporting from London. We bring you the news reports from the United Kingdom and Europe, and we have live reporters on standby to give their reports. In today's lineup, we look at Oxford University's breakthrough to fight COVID-19, reported by Love and Season. London Fashion Week goes online from Ashley Spiritu. And from Spain, a report on a Filipino artist's tribute to frontliners in Barcelona, reported by Lynn Tumbaga Diaz. In France, Switzerland, Monaco, and Belgium, they hold an INC online activity, reported by Kate Ribibis. And to end the show, we have a view from our window, giving you an interesting view here in London. Now for our UK main headlines. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson plans for easing lockdown. He said during our, his daily coronavirus briefing that the country has so far managed to avoid the catastrophe of a second peak of infection, and people can soon start to see more of their friends and family, saying that places such as hotels, restaurants, cinemas and museums will be allowed to reopen on the 4th of July. And it is meant that we have so far avoided the catastrophe of a second peak of infection that could have been overwhelmed the NHS and meant so many more lives lost. After a long period of asking you, the British public, to follow very strict and complex rules to bring coronavirus under control, we can now make life easier for people to see more of their friends and family and to help businesses get back on their feet and people back into jobs. From the 4th of July, the following premises will be allowed to reopen provided they are COVID secure. Hotels, bed and breakfast and self-contained holiday accommodation, caravan parks and campsites, places of worship and libraries, restaurants and cafes, bars, pubs, social clubs, cinemas and bingo halls, museums and galleries, hair salons and barbers, outdoor playgrounds and outdoor gyms. Of course, the fight is far from over. This is a nasty virus still that wants to take advantage of our carelessness. There will be, I'm afraid, there will be local outbreaks. And I must tell you that if the virus were to begin to run out of control, I will not hesitate to put on the handbrake and reverse some of these changes. In London's West End, theatres face coronavirus threat. London's West End has traditionally drawn people from all over the world to see its shows, but the theatre has been forced to reinvent themselves because of the coronavirus outbreak. The pandemic brought the curtain down on venues last March leaving theatres facing an uncertain future where continued social distancing measures threaten their existence. And we are um, certainly in a position where we have to do uh, extremely well in order to break even because the, the numbers are against us. However, we feel like it's our duty to the people who uh, who work with us and maybe to the industry as a whole for us to do everything we can to get people back working, even if that involves an element of risk and difficulty. In Germany now, where the rural district of Gütersloh where residents have been quarantined and are being tested for COVID-19. Many of these residents are employees of the Tony Slaughterhouse, which had COVID-19 outbreak this week. Local re-confinement has been declared for the 360,000 residents of the Gutesloh Canton. And now to Switzerland where the COVID-19 tracing app will roll out to the public on Thursday. The government said, urging everyone to download it on their smartphones. The free Swiss COVID application uses Bluetooth wireless technology to, rather, to register other phones that come into contact at least two meters of each other for a period of around 15 minutes. 
It will then send an alert to people who may unwittingly have been in prolonged proximity with someone who later tested positive for the novel coronavirus. And in France, the Eiffel Tower is reopening last Thursday for the first time since France imposed its coronavirus lockdown in March. Though tourists will not be allowed to the top of the Paris landmark until later in the summer. Tourists and Parisians ready for a workout gathered as the Iron Monument reopened after its longest closure since World War II, a highly symbolic move as France emerges from its coronavirus lockdown. The lifts or elevators and the top observation deck will remain closed because of social distancing. Better be ready to climb the 700 steps to the top and then the 700 steps to get back down. It's time for a break now, so please come back for more ENI UK and Europe edition. Welcome back to ENI UK and Europe edition. I'm Jakar Matera with more interesting stories from the UK this week. We go to Oxford University's findings that steroids are the first drug shown to save lives of the severest COVID-19 cases. To tell us more, we have Love Anne Season. Love Anne? Hi, thank you, Giancarlo. So last week, a groundbreaking treatment for hospital patients seriously ill with COVID-19 was found in the anti-inflammatory drug called dexamethasone. A trial in the United Kingdom showed the drug could save lives, the first at an international level to do so. It is inexpensive, on the shelf, and it can be used immediately in the state-run health service, or NHS, said Oxford professor Peter Horby. The trial was led by a team from Oxford University about 2,000 hospital patients were given dexamethasone and compared with more than 4,000 who were not. It cut the risk of death by a third of four patients on ventilators. For those on oxygen, it cut deaths by a fifth, according to initial results. So researchers say that had the drug been used to treat patients in the UK from the start of the pandemic, if up to 5,000 lives could have been saved. Dexamethasone is, a no is normally used to treat patients with a range of allergic reactions, as well as rheumatoid arthritis and asthma. Britain's Health Secretary Matt Hancock said the country's patients would start receiving the drug right away. He said that the government had started stockpiling dexamethasone back in March, after initial trials showed early signs of the drug's potential. The drug is part of the world's biggest trial, testing existing treatments to see if they also work for coronavirus. So, so far, the only drug proven to benefit COVID patients is remdesivir, which has been used for Ebola. Remdesivir is already being used in Britain. It is antiviral that appears to reduce the length of treatment in some patients, but the evidence was not strong enough to show whether it reduced mortality. Remdesivir is a new drug with limited supplies and a price is yet to be announced. So what makes dexamethasone remarkable is the fact that it is a medication that is readily available, cheap, largely free of side effects, and it had shown to be effective in treating COVID, severe COVID-19 cases. Back to you, Giancarlo. Thank you, Lavan. That's great news. Uh what is this uh, treatment for the drug and um, would it be suitable for patients with milder COVID symptoms? Yes, that's a good question, uh, Giancarlo. So according to BBC News, Chief Investigator Professor Peter Horby said that the treatment is up to 10 days and it costs 
about five pounds per patient. So essentially, it costs thirty-five pounds or forty-three dollars to save a life. So this is a drug that is globally available, but people should not go out and buy it to take home. As, a, as I mentioned earlier, it is a, actually a drug that is reported to work only for people who are already in hospital and receiving oxygen or me mechanical ventilation. In other words, the most unwell. So dexamethasone does not appear to help people with, mild, with milder symptoms of coronavirus who do not need help with their breathing. Back to you, Giancarlo. Thank you, Lavan. You also mentioned in your report that it is readily available. How widely available is the drug? Well, the drug has been around since 1957. It became available in the UK in the early 1960s. It was reported by BBC that because its circulation for it's been in circulation for a very long time, the drug is out of patent. This means that many companies can make it and it's widely available around the world. Giancarlo? So um, what has been the reaction towards the results of the trial so far? Well, it has been welcomed by the World Health Organization. And even for developing countries, it comes as a very good news as it costs less to buy. So according to BBC, the government in South Africa has already been advised to use it on patients needing oxygen or ventilation support. In Africa, more than 8,000 people have died from COVID-19, the majority of whom had underlying health conditions. Giancarlo? Thank you for that report, Love Anne. Thank you, Giancarlo. I'm Love Anne of William Season, reporting from the United Kingdom. We live in interesting times. In our next story, we go to London Fashion Week that has gone moved online. Here to tell us more about the story, we have Ashley Spiritu. Thank you, Giancarlo. Fashion Weeks all across the globe take place every year. World famous designers and celebrities gather to admire the new clothing collections. London Fashion Week began back in the 1980s and has been one of the most looked forward to events every year since then. It's fashion's most awaited day. However, the fashion industry knew they would be facing one of their most challenging problems in their history. London Fashion Week opened last week, but without catwalk shows due to, of course, the coronavirus pandemic, which is leading to a rethink of the seasonal event and reinventing the whole industry. In addition to the 100% digital format, this fashion week, usually dedicated to men's collection, will make genres an innovation that will, con that will continue post-pandemic. For the first time since it was conceived in 1983, there will be no models parading new collections before crowds at the biannual event. As many are now doing this new normal, some designers such as the the duo Jordan Luca will present their spring summer 2021 collection or smaller capsule collections by video. On the other hand, others such as Hussein Chalayan plans to show more than their collection, but will give the viewers a behind the scenes tour and have them involved in the process. All content posted online, which will include interviewers interviews with designers, showrooms, visits, and discussions on the environment and racism will be available free of charge. I think that conversation has really developed over the last few weeks, this idea of reset, not just in terms of the industry slowing down, but taking on board its impact on the environment. Caroline Rush, director of the British Fashion Council, which promotes British fashion, told AFP. With global outrage at the death of, of George Floyd, an unarmed African-American, the fashion industry also has an opportunity to be much more open, diverse to use this voice around issues such as racism, she added. The global pandemic is dealing a heavy blow to British fashion, with 73% of companies in the industry already reporting order cancellations, according to the BFC. The fashion industry, which employs 890,000 people, directly contributed £35 billion to the UK's GDP in 2019. 
fashion, London Fashion Week was already facing challenges even before the pandemic, as professionals were even already concerned about the possible negative impact of Brexit on what is a highly international industry. This being an international industry, it helped with trading between each fashion week, such as Paris and Milan Fashion Weeks. The majority of our industry did not want to leave the EU. We have very close trading relationships and have benefited definitely from being part of the EU. So it's very important that where possible, those links are able to continue, said Rush. Back to you, Giancarlo. Thank you, Ashley. Um, how was the London Fashion Week's online program? Yes, so London Fashion Week was a three-day event jam-packed with many different presentations despite it being online this year. As I said, many of, this, of the designers were going to show the behind the scenes of the collection and so a number of the presentations we got to see the designers at work. We even got to hear the designers talk in what they called it as designer diary. Many other famous designers and magazine editors were part of the program across the three days. With the power of technology and having the show online this year, we were able to show much more this year. Giancarlo? Thank you, Ashley. Uh, may we ask uh, which designers were able to join? Well, there were so many designers that showcased their collection that day. Many of the designers are recent fa fashion graduates and some have been part of London Fashion Week for years now. But despite where they are in the industry and despite the experience, it was all about the clothes and having the same love for fashion. There's a designer called Lida, who was a recent um, graduate of the Royal College of Art. She started off in Hamburg making bespoke suits for three years, and now she was here for London Fashion Week. There's another designer named David Comer, who, was, who has been a participant of London Fashion Week for years now. Fashion moved him at such a young age, he made his first collection at 15 and after that Coma moved on by getting his higher education in fashion. Ever since then he's been non-stop making collections and has been showcasing them every year for London Fashion Week. If you'd like to see at the show and the collection showcase during the event, just visit www.londonfashionweek.co.uk. Back to you Giancarlo. Thank you Ashley for that report. Thank you. I'm Ashley Spiritu, reporting from London, England. We live in interesting times. It's time for another break now, so please come back for more ENI UK and Europe editions. Welcome back to ENI UK and Europe edition. Now for more stories from mainland Europe. From Spain, we have a report on a Filipino artist tribute to frontliners in Barcelona. This is reported by Lynn Tumbaga Diaz. Let's watch the report. The local artists in Spain and Andorra perform a musical video tribute to the frontliners, our brave heroes during COVID-19 crisis. Together with singer Kichi Nadal and actress Alexandra Masangkay, who starred in Netflix The Platform, they were able to perform a music video of the song Hanga Ngayon. Aside from various artists, this tribute was made possible by its project manager Grace Hernandez Bonabon, visual and sound editors Mario Lorente Babol and Jan Christian Anthony and also Calayan Barcelona President Mark Malapitan. The video was a collaborative effort of Filipino artists who aimed to celebrate Philippine independence as well as to give appreciation to our frontliners. Thousands of people like and share the video. <laughs> From Barcelona, Spain, I'm Lynn Bautista Tumbaga Diaz, and we live in interesting times. 
Now to our bureau in Belgium, where France, Switzerland, Monaco, and Belgium themselves have held an INC online activity. This was reported by Kate Rebibis. Let's watch the report. Due to the pandemic, it is very clear that people have been isolated at home, whether it be with their families or just alone. However, advanced technology has offered them a way to remain connected with other people. As we know, scrolling through social media is very popular especially amongst the youth, while video conferencing applications have been frequently used for school and work. Another way to make use of these applications, especially during the free time while under confinement, was shown by the members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo or the Church of Christ. The members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo in the countries France, Switzerland, Monaco, and Belgium organized various activities through video conferencing. According to them, this is their way of keeping in touch with each other but also to stay active in their daily routines before the lockdown. Jaharmus Paras and Kimberly Van Acker explain why it is very important for them to hold activities amid the chaos. Personnellement, je trouve ça hyper important d'avoir des activités en cette période de pandémie car il est vrai que les jeunes d'aujourd'hui, ils passent plus de temps sur les réseaux sociaux ou à jouer en ligne et ils oublient complètement d'être productifs. Donc pour ma part, grâce à ces activités, j'ai dû me lever très tôt pour le fitness et le reste de la journée, j'ai essayé de, de participer à plusieurs activités en ligne et ça m'a beaucoup plu, j'ai appris beaucoup de choses, j'ai rigolé et surtout j'ai oublié le stress. Als een BNB-lid vind ik het heel belangrijk om deel te nemen aan activiteiten. Door deze activiteiten kunnen we contact maken met andere broeders en zusters en hen ook beter leren kennen. Deze vriendschappen zijn heel belangrijk in ons leven, vooral nu. Tegenwoordig houden de jongeren zich steeds meer bezig met slechte dingen. Dan is het zeer belangrijk om ook vrienden te hebben in de kerk. Aangezien zij ons altijd goed zullen beïnvloeden en ons altijd het goede advies geven en ons altijd op het rechte pad houden. The first activity they hold every morning is the physical fitness, which keeps their body strong and healthy. Around the afternoon, they would organize an activity for all the children, ages under 12, such as singing, drawing, and Bible storytelling. Afterwards, they would hold activities such as video showings, seminars, team buildings, meet and greets, cooking tutorials, and Bible studies. April Lopez shared her thoughts about the activities they participated in. Ik vind het altijd fijn om deel te nemen aan activiteiten zoals deze, want hierdoor kan ik de andere Kadiwa en Benhi van onze district terugzien. Het is zeg maar een compensatie voor het feit dat we nog geen activiteiten samen kunnen doen. Tot later. Oh, jong! Despite the severe situation our world is facing right now, the members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo proved with positive spirits that not even a pandemic can keep them away from being productive. Reporting from Leuven, Belgium, I am Kate Rebibis, and we live in interesting times. Okay, now we move on to our sports update. We have with us from EBC Germany, Eva-Marie Krause. Thanks, John Carlo. I'm Eva Marie Krause, and here are the sports highlights in Europe this week. For today's report, we will take a look at the Adria Tour 2020, a regional charity tennis tournament organized by one of the greatest tennis players in our time, Novak Djokovic. This tournament was set to take place in cities known for being the places of well known tennis stars such as Serbia, Croatia, Montenegro, Bosnia, and Herzegovina scheduled on weekends from June 12 to July 15, 2020. It was said that through this tournament, players receive not only help with their earnings, but also support charities. Nevertheless, since the very beginning, the Adria Tour 2020 was heavily criticized for taking place in times where the spread of COVID-19 pandemic is still affecting many lives around the world. Social distancing was not taken seriously, especially since many matches were played in front of thousands of fans. 
on June 21, 2020, Rigard Dimitrov was reported to be the first to be tested positive for the coronavirus. In conclusion to that, the final match in Sadar, Croatia was cancelled. Following that also tested positive, co-players Bona Koric and Viktor Trajki. Lastly, Novak Djokovic himself admitted he and his wife Jelena are also tested positive, which was negatively received by the public. As of June 23, 2020, the organizing committee of Adria Tour 2020 officially announced the cancellation of the tournament. Giancarlo. Thank you, Eva. So, can we ask you a few questions? Um, is there been an official statement released uh, by Novak Djokovic? Yes, according to the official site of the Adria Tour 2020, Novak expressed his apology to the public. He apologized for the concert Adria Tour and for the measures not taken seriously. This incident does not only shed the bad light on the player himself, but also on tennis in general, questioning the return of Djokovic in tennis in the near future. Another big event that everyone looked forward to, but now have been cancelled due to COVID-19 pandemic, are the New York and Berlin Marathons. The Berlin Marathon, organized by Mark Milde, with the help of SCC events, would have taken place on September 27, 2020. The New York Marathon, organized by New York Roadrunner, through the help of Tata Consultancy Services, would have taken place on November 1st. Since 2006, the Berlin, New York, Boston, Chicago and London Marathons have joined together to form the World Marathon Majors with an average of 50,000 runners taking part each year. Because of the coronavirus, the Berlin and New York Marathons were cancelled. Despite of the fact that the New York Marathon would have celebrated its 50th anniversary, according to the official statements, they did their best to plan everything out so that the marathons would still take place but they could not do so because of health and safety concerns. Considering that, social distance is difficult to maintain when running. Afraid of mass events such as this, the risk of infection is inevitable due to many people from different nations coming together. It is presumed that the halt of the endurance sports world will remain until the time when there will be a remedy for the coronavirus. Back to you, Giancarlo. Thank you, Eva. Uh, just one more question. Uh, what will happen to all the runners who have been preparing and have registered for this year's marathons? And that's a good question. Runners who have registered for this year can get a refund or postpone their participation for the next three years. There's also the possibility to participate in a virtual race in the period from October 17th to November 1st, but we will receive further details in July. Thank you for your report, Eva. Thank you too. I'm Eva Marie Krauser from EBC Germany, and we live in interesting times. And now, finally, to end our show, uh, we go to our view from a window. Uh, this week, it comes from here in London, where EBC United Kingdom's Ned Reynolds took a photo of the Red Arrows and Patrouille de France fly past Buckingham Palace. This was to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the Charles de Gaulle's BBC broadcast in 1940. Thank you for that wonderful view, Ned. We hope you will stay safe and keep positive. We will be bringing you more stories next week from the United Kingdom and Europe. I've been Giancarlo Matera for ENI UK and Europe edition, and we live in interesting times.